Hello and welcome to Kitty Plays Morrowind. I'm Nighty, the Black Panther Kitty, and I'll be the host for this episode. So last time we went and gave the quest to Edwina Elbert. If you remember, we were searching the Dwarven Ruins. And let's see if she has another quest for us. So, more interruptions, Conjurer. Do you want more duties? Why are you here? Well, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about maybe you have more duties for me. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice working for you. I want you to find some Dwemer plans or blueprints. Plan, plans or blueprints? Say, do you want to build your own Dwemer ruin? What about these blueprints? Sinelius already sent the blueprints he found in the Chuleftings to the Emperor, but the excavation report mentioned Nsuleft, which is southwest of Dagon Fell. You will need to swim or fly across parts of the Sea of Ghosts. Bring back any plants or blueprints you find. Swim or fly, you say? Well, okay. Um, I'm going to try. Goodbye. Let me see if, if the map shows that place. Is it that? No, that's Wolverine Hall. Sea of Ghosts. Let's see, did we get a... So this is this is where the last quest has taken us. And I can only guess that it is somewhere in this area again. But as you see, this game... And that's actually what I like about Morrowind. It doesn't show me immediately where it is. She didn't tell me where it is. So uh, about these about these blueprints, I have the plants already. No, okay, <laughs> I, I was confused as a player here. Um, I hope that when I click the blueprints, that she will tell me where this place is. So she said, "So, so ah, there she did say it, southwest of Dagonfell." So let me see if I can find Dagonfell here. That was Molatmar. Well, well, let's let's just southwest would be this direction. Let's just go to Molagmar and check the signposts there because I think there is also a major skill in Molagmar. Mm, getting the orientation after not having played for about one month. There we go. Travel. Hmm. That's. Check the map. That is, well, that's one of the places I can go to. Let's see where I can go to from Balmora because the places are. I can't go to all the places at once. Sometimes I need to make several hops. What can I do also, this is another opportunity to visit my warm friend Ajira. Oh, ah, Ajira. Welcome. But I know you should know that I really, really adore her. And it seems like I don't have anything. I do have something to sell you, but I don't think you want it. Yeah, I'd, I would have some Dwemer Greaves. You, you know, maybe you could grind them up, put them into a potion. It does totally make sense. I mean, it's Dwarven stuff. Mm, let's see if I have some potions that don't make any sense. No, I don't. I need to... I need to find my place at home. My, myself a place to stay. My, my place at home, yeah. Return, that was the wrong button. No. How do I... I totally forgot how to exit the inventory. This inventory screen. Wasn't it the button for the inventory, which I'm totally pressing right now? I'm confused. Let me check. I am sorry that you have to go through this, but this is really confusing to me. Menu mode is tab, and I thought that I was closing this menu with a tab. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That's the thing. I'm currently using my to-do list on a tablet, which is to my right. And it is covering the lower right corner of the screen where the cancel button is. There you go. That, that's what happens if you're totally confused and have something obscuring your screen. People never have something obscuring your screen. Let me see if I can train something. It doesn't look like it. Okay. 
Well, Ajira, it's been nice, very, very pleasant talking to you. I'm going to see you again very soon because I really enjoy your company. So we want to maybe fly. Well, we, we do have Swift Swim for one point, which is basically worthless. And it is a chance 100 spell, so we can actually make a new one which has a higher point level. We have Feather, that's not for flying. What we're looking for is a Levitation. Or we could also use Water Walking for 60 seconds. That's also something we can do. Or Water Breathing and then we just um, dive under it. That actually sounds like more fun, but there are the, the, those pesky fish, so Water Walking. I think Water Walking it is for 60 seconds. That's pretty long. And it only costs us 9 points of Magicka. Okay, let's sell the Greaves to our good friend. To our good friend Loading Area. Well, computer, while you're loading the area, I'm going to load some drink into my glass. There we go. The glass now contains a drink. And I didn't get the chance to drink it. But there will be another instance of loading area. Too fast. Still, anyway, going to drink something. Okay. Sarah. Ravir, you know, I've got these dwarf grease for you. They're way better than the fake Daedric armor that you sell. I'm pretty sure you will appreciate this. And I'm even going to, you know, it's because we're so good friends, I'm even going to make it a bit cheaper. There you go. Oh, I will come again. Okay, now let us see where we can go from here. I'm going to try the travel agent in the Mage's Guild again. And again, Balmora has very, very low frame rate. I don't understand why. There is something that I wanted, some trick that I wanted to try to smooth the frame rate of the recording. But for this I need to find a way to record with a variable frame rate and record with the same frame rate that the game has. And then maybe I can smooth it afterwards. Anyhow, I'm going to travel. Okay, it's the same places, so so Mage's Guild only has these places to travel to. Then the thing that I remembered with having different places depending on where we are is not the Mage's Guild, but in fact the Silt Strider. So we are going to try the Silt Strider services. Hello, Rannis, Aphris. Yes, I am working on my duties in the Mage's Guild right now, so don't be so... Well, what's the word? Don't be so stern, I think, would be a good word for this sentence. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, but you should know by now, if you're wondering why I sometimes struggle to find a word, English is not my native language, you might recognize me as having a German accent. Okay, so we have Aldrun, Sedanin, both of which we already visited, Vivek also, and Soran. I don't know, but I'm going to go to Vivek, which is in the south, and I suspect... Um, the place that we're looking for. I think it was Dagon Fell. Um, let me check the journal again. Yes, I am. My, my brain is like a sieve. Everything goes through. Um, southwest of Dagon Fell. So let us see if we can fast travel there. Or... Well, that's that's where we can go to. Okay. I can go to Molokmar. This is where I wanted to go because I thought that maybe Dagon Fell would be close to Molokmar. It sounds like it because it's a two-word town name and Same low price. which doesn't make much sense to me where can I can I go from here Viv only Vivek and Suran okay well let us check the signposts won't we there is while it is dark there are signposts all over the place I get Molak Mar is it written with two, it's with two, and two mountains. No, that's not good. Uh, that's, a, that's a little thing. I can't go and ask people for directions. I can't go to someone and ask, hey, do you know where Dagonfell is? Which would actually make lots of sense, in my opinion. Make a 
I'm totally on my own here. And basically it's... Um, there, is there a... There is a signpost back there, I think. Let us see. Yes, there is a signpost out here. And a Betty and Bullnatch. Majestic creatures than them. And this is, I think this is a Natch farm. Let us see if they have a quest for us. Just a friendly warning. Don't spook the Natch. Don't worry, they're completely safe if you don't bother them, but get them riled up and they're trouble. Especially the Betty Natch. Betty Natch? The Betty Natch is the tough one. It's the Bull Natch that's poisonous, but the Betty Natch is twice as tough and twice as mean. Oh, wait, the Bull Natch are poisonous? Well, normally a single Betty Natch will have a harm of 5 or 6 Bull Natch, but we keep the Bull Betty ration closer to 1 to 1 for faster breeding, tends to make our Betty Natch a, a little more aggressive than they are in the wild. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. You don't, by chance, know where Dagon fell is, do you? No, she doesn't. Well, can you tell me something about the cantons that Morrowind is split into? Uh, that Vivek is split into? Well, Vivek's cantons are buildings with many levels. The upper works are the rooftops, with the shops and rich folks' manors. The waste works are the next tier down, usually shops and guilds with some apartments. Kennelside is the lowest level, where the poor folks live. The underworks are the sewers below Kennelside. Only grubbers and cleaners go down there. The corridors are like mazes, so watch where you go. The temple built all the cantons and leases them to shops, guilds and residents. That seems like not, not that many people live there. There are not that many, many residence houses in that place, but that's also obvious because um, I think it hasn't been until the next part where they actually cared about having a house for every NPC. Okay, I think before we go just, just right out exploring, uh, we should head somewhere else. So I'm going to quickly write down I want to go at Vina to Msulev, which is southwest of Dagon Fell. Because there is another place that we can go to. If we go from Caldera to Aldrun, or the other way around, we will meet two people that we refrained from talking to. Now we can do this, and then maybe do some exploring, and maybe we'll simply find that Dagonfell place. Did I already pass the Silstrider? Seems like I've gone too far. No, the Silstrider is up here. Ah, people, I'm really confused today. Okay, now let's. Why walk when you can ride? Let's get to. Aldrun, which we can. We should be able to go to Aldrun. Yeah, to the guild in Aldrun at least. Ride. But we should be able to travel to Aldrun from here, yeah. So once you have money, traveling is... Quick traveling is a good thing because it's easy and rather cheap. But when you're basically out of money, then you can't quick travel. And also remember my rule, I only quick travel to places that I have visited once. So even if we had found a quick travel to Dagon Fell, if that's not the only way to get there, I would want to wait... Okay, okay, you are. You might have been right if you told me that there are also towns called like that in the northern area. So we are now going to go to Caldera, which is down here. Let's see who we are going to meet. I didn't write down how far on the road they are, so I don't know if this is the shorter or the longer road. No, 
now, honestly. This is not the right direction. I want to go more south-ish. Should I should look at the little compass map thing in the lower right corner when I do things like this. Oh. Hello, this one is aggressive. A wild gear which has a hide that I can sell. Oh, I can't rest yet. I'm still too close to the city. This is still a cell within the city. So for easier it's also wrong, I should it should be something like this way. Well, let's head through the wilderness, shall we? And then miss the people completely, I know. Oh, we should come back. You know, I should have uh <laughs> I should have just gone to Caldera instead and yeah, I could rest and this is now I have to that one. That's my low fatigue speaking here. And also I can use Aristar Magica. But these are rather seldom, so I'm going to use this and I'm going to one hit him anyway. So let us rest here until healed. A rat. I think the Red King doesn't like us cats. As we are killing so many of his denizens, but on the other hand, if we don't, he will take over the world. And yes, I know this is not Elder Scrolls lore. I think that was a non aggressive enemy still. Um, this is the lore of a pen and paper game that I am game mastering it which is called the black cat and it's a spin-off of the, the German game Das Schwarze Auge so the original name is Die Schwarze Katze uh, and Das Schwarze Auge has actually been translated to English as I said pen and paper game if you like it check out the dark eye which has which also has a very rich lore um, and the story of the world is progressing as we speak. So I'm uh, I'm a subscriber of the, well, you could say, uh, the Dark Eye Herald or something like that as, as a translation for its name. Um, it is the um, newspaper which always tells me what has happened in the world. And it's like people writing so officially people writing stories for, for the world, but there's also games that are played that influence the world. I know that, that Dungeons & Dragons does have this too, but to be honest, when I played Dungeons & Dragons, I didn't know of any of that. Um, didn't even know that there is a set world that you can play in. Mind you, the one that I played was Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, so it could be that back then they didn't have any world to play in. Like any fixed world with, this is the world of Dungeons & Dragons. These are the places that you have. It seemed more like, and we're now going to have to traverse the road from the other side. I'm sorry, I could have just, just ported here and then walked. But well. If I, if I did, you wouldn't have heard my stories, or you, I would have started talking about the Dark Eye. So, uh, you have this this world, which, when I got to know um, Dungeons & Dragons, as, as I said, I didn't see any of the world. Also, your characters only have like two skills, if they're warriors, which is one general skill and one weapon skill, which, of course, is a way I just want to check if one of these actually says Dagonfell because then we're just going to go there. Um, which is one of the uh, one of the uh, general skills and one of the fighting skills if you're a fighter. That was always way too few for me. And then I saw 
the dark eye which has a myriad of skills actually so many that that nowadays I say it's it's too much it's too much to handle but anyhow they have, they have myriad of skills like swimming um, and all that stuff Sw swimming um, juggling singing making music um, so it's like it's like nearly everything it's its own skill and um, skill rolls aren't just um, you know you roll for one um, for one stat with a bonus or something but it's actually three rolls on stats where is the enemy I hear the fight music but I don't see there you are um, you roll against three stats and you use the skill level kind of as a pool if you rolled poorly so if you like you have say a 15 you always try to roll lower than than your stat value you have a 15 in a stat you roll a 14 everything's good nothing happens if you roll a, a 16 though you reduce one from your skill level from your pool and if you manage to do all three rolls with have still having points over you manage to get the skill right and the more points you have over the better your success is that's basically the system of the dark i always love that because it's 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 a bit more complex or back then i loved it because it was a bit more complex i said to a drone right he was walking in the completely wrong direction that's that even happens to me in real life when i'm talking so um not an enemy that i need to fight so when when you have all these all these skills available, you have these more complex skill throws or rolls. Um, it's that's that's always a false friend for me because uh, in German we say uh, we throw the dice instead of rolling them. Although rolling makes much more sense. On the other hand, you throw them before they start to roll, don't you? Um, so you have these complex, more complex rolls, and um, I played it for a while, and I really loved that. And after a while, I actually, yeah, I started going to Gnarmok, which is, doesn't make any sense. I need to head towards Aldrun. So you need to, um, you need to do all these fancy maths and stuff. And it was, yeah, these days, this is just too complicated for me. I still love playing this game. I'm, I'm a player in, um, in another, I, know, I missed it up perfectly. I'm a player in another um, group, but honestly, I wouldn't want to master it because it's got so many things to take care about. And yet, still, I started mastering it again for the other round because the game master needed a break. So I started mastering the most famous campaign, actually, which is also the most hardest for master and players. Um, but still, it's it's very it's very exhausting to to master this because you have so many things to worry about, so many mechanics. Um, everything has its own game mechanic. Like when you're on a horse, fight fighting is different, all that stuff. But all these are optional rules, so you can just you know you can just ignore them. So um, they they went and tried to make that game easier by. Or basically, they made a children version of that game, called it the Black Cat, or I would say the Dark Cat, to um, use the same scheme as the English name. So this this is one of the people actually, uh, and I wrote down she might be a bandit. So let me save the game and see if if she's a bandit, and if so, if we can kill her. And then remind me, I was talking about the Dark Eye, um, respectively, the Black Cat. Hey there! Yes, you! Interested in making a deal? That oh, sounds more like Link, Link came out. It's not very believable. <clears throat> yep, I'm trying to also learn to do voices. Hey there! Yeah, you! Interested in making a deal? A deal? Well, that sounds intriguing. Look, I'm just a poor merchant, just trying to make my way to Gnarmok with some trade goods. I could use an escort, though, since mine seems to have buggered off, if you'd be willing to take me there, I'll give you. Uh, no, I shouldn't. Although. It's a dangerous trip. All right, I'll give you the boots of blinding speed. Although I'll be overpaying you quite a bit. Oh, that's interesting. 
You want to give me some, some magic artifact? Well, what about these boots? Tell me more about them. I'm, I'm going to, to first first of all, yeah, of course I'm going to t take you to Gnarmok. Gives us a way to figure out a new place. And maybe find the way to Dagonfell on the way. Excellent. Although, that seems quite a high payment. The, the boots of blinding speed are a rare and wondrous thing. Never mind. I made the deal and I'm an honest woman. Let's get going. Well, she didn't want to tell me anything about these boots of blinding speed, and the name itself already sounds very... Uh, what about these boots? A wondrous pair of boots indeed, and the name says it all. I would hate to ever part with them. Uh, thing is, I as a player already know what's up with them. But let's say our character is gullible enough to just take them to Gnarmok. So let's head back to the last signpost that we visited. Shouldn't run off too far. I'm way faster than all the NPCs are. And I think Narmog is actually the... Or am I being an idiot again? Let me first check if I'm being an idiot again. This is Margan. So I was right. Molagmar is this, so we haven't been to Gnarmok yet. And I'm pretty sure I've seen... I'm pretty sure it was when I went the wrong way. When I said, hey, I'm going the wrong way. This is not where I need to go to go to Aldrun. And then there was a, a sign telling me this is the road to... Margan Molagmar. Thing is, I want to go to Gnarmok. And I think I need to use this. This is Bolmara Caldera. And Gnarmok this way, right. Perfect. That was the road that I was accidentally traveling without knowing that I needed to travel it now. Oh, let us fetch some of these. I think it's time to step up our alchemy game. Which will be very annoying. You will already have seen because I did it once already, but I will show you again. I will tell you why I'm going to do most of that off stream, off screen then. Off recording, I think would be the best way to express this. Anyway, back to the Black Cat. So, basically what they did is, it, it was out of a whim, it was out of a joke. They said, yeah, we're going to, we're going to have um, the Dark Eye, but with cats being the main protagonists and then they made it in a complete game so you're playing awoken cats like house cats that can walk and talk during the night and during the day they just act as if they're regular house cats nothing wrong with them or nothing good with them in that case and well they can't talk but they talk in their own language humans don't understand them and vice versa um but, but uh, what as far as game mechanics go they made it way easier so what they did is you have your stats and you have your skill levels and then you have a neat formula which you apply once to your stats you get a number then you add your skill levels to that number and then you have a number your to hit your to roll value basically ah band deck mine okay hola ode kinesis aldrun and Gnarmok is there, let me read, triple recheck, she wants to go to Gnarmok. Um, and then you just try to roll 2d20 and be lower than that value, lower or equal that value. Which of course means since your target is lower or equal, two ones is a critical hit or a critical success and two twenties is the critical failure, as it always is with the dark eye. Which I usually make tend to make jokes about because when when people party that they have a, a twenty natural twenty in um, failed okay it wasn't the magic cat 
failed twice, that's because of the law fatigue. I always say, oh, that's the, but that's a critical failure if you if you, if you roll twenty. Because if you roll a twenty when trying to attack, then it actually is a critical failure in the dark eye, and the black cat. And the things they did for making it easier is they um, reduced the skills to about twenty or so, so you still have a good amount of skills. I think it's it's not like only ten or something. It's like you have you have a good amount, and. Um, so they have two skills if you do things with your hands, and it's um, it's hard for me to translate them to English, to be honest. Sorry, but um, they amount to either you have tools, so basically do something with your hands with tools, or do something with your hands without tools, and it's all the same to the game basically. Then of course you have begging because cats beg for food from their um, from their humans, for example. Um, you have these things which you don't have in the dark eye, so if you would beg in the dark oh, eye it would be something ahead. like coercing or wooing, and yes, these are two different skills. Something like that. And um, here, well, begging has its own skill because it's more important in that game, but on the other hand, Many skills have like been unified, but it's also not too simple. It's still rather complex, which I, I like. It's it's got its complexity, but it's not so complex that you start losing focus. And that's what I've been game mastering for uh, a group of two players, which was very fun, very much fun. Although I think I should take on a group of. Three players don't have enough magic. Uh, trying to pick on something, someone can actually defend themselves, huh? Like me. Please, there we go. Careful. Yeah, I'm careful. Don't worry. Can't you see? I mean, the dagger was very, very far away from you. Damn it. Just open your eyes next time. Oh no, I'd rather fight that rat. Okay. And yes, I didn't use my magic on purpose. Because I'm not going to waste my magicka on a mere rat again. Not because I'm starting to be arrogant. I should start to be arrogant at some point because I'm a wizard. <laughs> but because simply I don't want to heal like every two hits. I think this is the place she wants to go. Yeah. Well, this is close enough. Thanks for your help. I suppose it's only fair that I give you the reward. Here, take them. Though it pains me to give them, you are now the owner of the Blue Boots of Blinding Speed. Oh, goodbye then. I, can you tell me a little bit more? Maybe about the boots? Or about yourself? Uh, that's me. Just an uh, honest trader. Okay. So I'm going to, to, first of all, drop a quick save and then put on the boots, because they're wondrous, aren't they? Yeah, constant effect, blind and fortify speed. So this is how she saw the world all the time. Very neat. I luckily can't take them off, so I can't... It's not like there are cursed items that I can't take off. Very good. To be honest, they're not wondrous. They don't make much sense if you're fast. And she wasn't that fast also. I, I would have been very fast now. But um, being blind in that game, running around with a black thing. Okay, let me close. Does someone else know something about her? Uh, that one. She's got a bounty on her head, I believe. Although... No one would bother trying to collect on it. She's a slippery one. Often deals in shoddy items. Great promise, but low reward, you know. So, say, she is an outlaw. Let me confirm that. You're in Knarmok. 
Go ahead, you ask the questions, and I do the answering. Well then, what can you tell me about this place? Uh, everyone's worried about those two breeding match that I've been attacking. Oh, is that so? Breeding match, you say? That's right. This pair of them that wander around north of here, they've come near the town a few times. We drove them off, but I'm sure they'll be back unless someone does something. Someone does something, you say. I smell like that's something we can try to do. After all, we've got the power of quick save and quick load on our hands. Let me just see if there is some kind of trader here. There's a boat in Gnarmok. She can travel agent me to Kul and Hlaoad. Okay. And I'd say before we continue exploring that nice little town, I'm going to make a little cut here. And you people on YouTube will have to wait for... Well, I always, I always think about a week-ish because the um, the median of rolling 2d6 is seven days so I will make the cut here and we will see each other in the amount of days that the dice will announce bye bye